Welcome to Physics Made Easy. In this video, we will review some of the aspects of nuclear decay that you need to know for your final exam. We will do so by working together on an exercise involving alpha decay, the concept of half-life, activity and decay curves. In a few seconds, you will see on the screen the text of the exercise. I will also include it in the description of the video. When it appears, pause the video and try to figure out the questions. When you are ready, resume the video and together we will go through the exercise while at the same time reviewing the main concepts you need to know for your exam. This exam preparation video is suited for students preparing their final high school exams in physics, like the IB standard level or high level, A levels, or any other high school physics program that include nuclear physics. So, how did it go? Did you manage to answer the questions? Okay, let's review the questions one by one. Question number one. Uh, polynomial 21684 alpha decays into an isotope of lead. Write the corresponding decay reaction. So let's consider the reactant, which is actually the polynomial 21684. Well, do you know what these numbers are? Remember that a nucleus is made of neutrons and protons. So if I represent the nucleus here, and say three protons. It is made of three protons and four neutrons. So the number of protons Z is equal to three. The number of neutrons is equal to four. The total number of nucleons, which are constituents of the nucleus, i.e. neutrons or protons, A is equal to seven. So how do we note this? What a notation to represent this nucleus? Well, there are three protons, so we know it's lithium, it's the third one in the periodic table, and it has seven nucleons. So that would be the representation of this nucleus. And we can know by taking seven minus three that there are four neutrons. So in the case of our polonium, we have 84 protons and 216 nucleons. If we wanted to find the number of neutrons, we would take this minus that. It alpha decays. Therefore, there will be production of an alpha particle. What is an alpha particle? An alpha particle is a helium nucleus. A helium nucleus contains two protons and two neutrons. So two protons and two plus two, four nucleons and it decays into lead. Now these numbers need to be conserved. Therefore, to get 84, we have to add 82 to the two, and here we have to have 212. Question B. Radioactive decay is said to be random and spontaneous. What does this sentence mean? Well, this is obviously a lesson question, so you need to learn this. Nuclear decay is random and spontaneous, so the key words here are random and spontaneous. Random. When you have a um, nucleus A that becomes a nucleus B, this occurs with a certain probability called lambda. Lambda is called the decay constant. And lambda is specific characteristic of A. So every isotope's got their own lambda. The decay constant is a probability that a nucleus will decay within a second. So for example, if lambda of A was equal to 0 0.1, that means that every second a nucleus A has a probability of decaying of 10%. 
Now you can make the analogy with a dice. A dice has six faces. So when you roll the dice, one dice, you roll the dice, you have one chance out of six of having a given number, say five. When you roll it again, you also get a one chance out of six, etc. So you cannot predict when you will get your five, your number, the number you want. It's the same thing for the nucleus. Every second, there's 10% chance that the nucleus decay. You cannot predict when this will happen. On the other hand, you can do some statistics. If you roll your dice, say, 6,000 times, well, the number of fives, the number you wanted, the number of fives you get will be about 1,000. Here, if I have 1,000 nuclei, well, if my lambda is 0 0.1, there's chances that after one second, about 100 will have decayed. I can do statistics, but I cannot predict which nuclei will decay or when a specific nuclei will decay. So you should write. Random means it's not possible to predict when a specific nucleus will decay or which one will decay within a sample. So that's for random. Then the other one is spontaneous. Let's go back to our dice. I'm a cheat. Suppose I want to, to win more. What should I do? Well, maybe I could put a little bit of mass on the side opposite to the number I want, opposite to five, and when I throw my dice, it will more often fall on five. So I would cheat. I would change the probability of having a five. Well, I could maybe do the same thing here. I know that in chemistry, when I heat the temperature of a reaction, the reaction occurs more quickly. So maybe I can do that and increase the temperature. But this will not work in nuclear physics. I could maybe change something else, apply pressure, uh, sing it a song, I don't know, do something to my sample, and hopefully it would change the probability of it to decay, but no, that won't work. Nothing can change this number for a specific isotope. So you cannot change the rate of decay. So for spontaneous, I wrote down, spontaneous means that a nucleus cannot be prevented to decay, the rate of decay cannot be changed. Question 2a. The graph here is a measurement of the evolution of the activity of the sample with time. Using the graph, determine the half-life. OK, when you have a graph, the first thing you need to check is the axis. I have time in the x-axis, in seconds, and activity on the y-axis in Bakehead. What is activity? Let's remind ourselves of this important concept. If you have a sample, Imagine you have a sample of radioactive nuclei, and you've got 10,000 of them in your sample, and to each of them is associated a decay constant, which is 0.1. That means that each of these nuclei have got 10% chance of decaying during the first second. So the number of decays between the first, during the first second will be how much? thousand. And that is the activity. It's the number of reactions you have within a sample in a second. So we say that the activity is a thousand Becquerel. And you can easily imagine a formula, right? A is equal to lambda n. n is a decreasing exponential, negative exponential form. So A is proportional to N, so we'll also have this feature. Now a little exercise. What will be the activity between the first and the second second? During the first second, a thousand decayed, so you have nine thousand left. Each of them got 10% chance of decaying, so during this second second, 
There'll be 900 that decay, so the activity will be 900. Okay, back to the question. We need to determine the half-life. What is half-life? Well, the half-life is the time it takes for a sample to have half its nuclei that have decayed. So, in this case, well, if you have half of the nuclei which have decayed, you get 15,000 left, right? You take 15,000, and you look at how much time it took. That would be your half-life. So, question 2a, the half-life is 0.15 seconds. Question 2b. What assumption did you make regarding the measurement of the activity when answering A? Yes, activity is measured. You have a machine that actually detects radiation. For example, it will detect the alpha particle and make a little beep. So you can count the number of decays. But for that, you need to make sure that the background is not radioactive too. Right? There's stuff in the environment that can also uh, decay and give you some alpha particles, like for example, radium to radon. This is quite common. So you first need to measure the background radiation. Then you do your measurement, and then you remove this background radiation from your measurement. So here, the assumption we made when we calculated the half-life is that there was either no background radiation, or that the background radiation was measured and removed from the data before plotting the graph. Question 2c. Complete the graph up to a time of 0.6 seconds. Well, that's quite trivial. You see that after one half life, the number of polonium nuclei divided by two. After a second half life, it will have divided by two again. So we have 15,000 divided by two, that's about 7.5, giving you a point around here. And then, it divides by two again for the next half-life. So, about 7.5 divided by two, 0.37, so something like maybe this. And then again by two. So you get something like this. It's important that you show that you know what you're doing, and that you show here, with little dashed lines, that oh, you're always counting in the, the, the number of nuclei by two, right? Question 2D. What would be the activity of the sample after 0.75 seconds? Right, so we see that it is more than 0.6, so we can't use the graph, and actually it wouldn't be very precise anyway. So we need to calculate it. Every half-life, the number of nuclei that remains is divided by 2. So you have 30,000, after one 15,000, after another one 7,500, etc. So in 0.75 seconds, how many times do I have the half-life? Well, I have it five times. Right? So I call this number little n. And the number of my nuclei will be divided by two every half-life. So I'm going to divide it by two five times. Right? So I would write down that the number of nuclei I have left is the number I had at the beginning, divided by two five times. If I multiply it by lambda on both sides, well, this is the activity. That also works for the activity. So I can write down A equals A0 divided by two five times giving me 30,000, divided 2 at the power of 5, and I found something like 940 becquerel. Question 2e. Consider a new sample of 10,000 nuclei of polonium-216. How many nuclei of lead would have been produced after 0.5 seconds? So here, we cannot use the same trick we used in the previous question. Yes, 0.5 seconds is not an integral times, sorry, it's not an integral number of times the half-life. We have to use the decay equation. 
which is n, the number of nuclei that is remaining at time t, is equal to the number of nuclei you had at the beginning, exponential minus lambda, which is a decay constant, and t. There's a relationship between lambda and the half-life, which is lambda is 0.693 over the half-life. So I can plug it in here and reformulate n0 exponential minus 0.693 t on t one half. So the number of remaining nuclei of polonium will be at 0.5 seconds n0 exponential 0 0.693 by 0.5 divided by the half-life. And zero, this is being 30,000. So no, 10,000. If I calculate this, I find something like 993, which I will round to 990. Now, this is not the answer. This is the remaining nuclei of polonium. So if you have a 990 nuclei remaining, how many will you have of lead? Well, the complement, the number of lead at 0.5 seconds will be 10,000 minus 990. So, 9,010. Be careful with this. Often you do the calculation and you stop here, but remember that what you're calculating here is the remaining nuclei of the reactant of here, polonium. And if you asked how many nuclei are produced, then you have to find out the complement, right? That's it for today. I hope this video has helped you prepare for your exams in physics. We reviewed alpha decay, the concepts of half-life and activity, and also we worked on a decay curve. I'm currently preparing new videos with exam exercises in nuclear physics, so stay tuned. It's going to come out very soon. There are many other videos like these on the channel. So do hit that subscribe button for more and ace at your final exams in physics. See you soon in the next episode of Physics Made Easy.